What's up, everybody? Welcome inside our Champion Chevrolet NSN studio. This is episode seven of the Jared Lucas Show. He's Jared Lucas. I'm Alex Margulies. I want to thank our partners on this show, including Key Acura of Reno, who sponsors uh, this first segment. Uh, Jared, we're going to get into the game in a second. We'll get a deeper dive on this later, but congratulations. 2,000 points in your college career last night. I imagine that was uh, a pretty crazy feeling. Uh, yeah, pretty crazy feeling in uh, five well, five years of college basketball, a pretty cool accomplishment. Played with plenty of teammates who have helped me throughout the years and, uh, you know, some, some great teammates, great coaches here in Nevada as well. All right, let's get into last night's win. 76-58 uh, over Wyoming, uh, kind of a revenge game for you guys. You guys went up there to Laramie, and that was the worst defensive performance you've had on the season. You gave up almost 100 points. Uh, in this one, your defense was locked in from the start, and you only uh, allowed 26% shooting in the first half. Uh, and really just kind of came out guns blazing. Uh, what did you like the most about just the way your team came out and then even just sustained that game against Wyoming? I think Trey did a great job defensively. He set the tone for us early, and, uh, you know, I was looking at the stat sheet last night. Their best player averaging almost 18 points per game, finished with six, a season mm -hmm. low. Uh, so, first of all, I think starting with Trey, and I think from top to bottom, we did a really good job defensively understanding our assignments. Uh, I think we did a really good job uh, staying connected. That's been our goal recently, ever since we kind of, got blown out against New Mexico by 30. Uh, it's been a big emphasis for us to stay connected as a team. And I think uh, the last couple of games we've done a tremendous job, even in our loss to New Mexico. Uh, we did a great job staying connected, so hopefully we can continue to do that. How much do you make of this matchup with Wyoming, the difference of playing on the road versus home, or is it even more so like now you know a team, you know how to play them, you can take away from a scouting report, make some adjustments, is it the home versus road that makes a big difference, or is it the opportunity to play a team again, or is it both? I think it's a little bit of both, but I think when you look at the University of Wyoming, getting to Laramie, Wyoming, uh, playing at 7,200 feet is not easy. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when, it's one, when there's one team, when you look, take a look at home and away, where it's really hard, it's Wyoming. Uh, so being able to get them at our place is huge. I know they've had our number. Uh, the last couple of years, despite me being only being here for two years now, I knew mm -hmm. they've, they've had our number the last couple of years. So uh, I know guys like Trey brought it up to me before the game, yo, we got to get this done for me because uh, he brought up I'd never beaten Wyoming. Dang. Um, and I know that kind of crazy, but my freshman year at Oregon State, we played Wyoming and Laramie, and, and I was able to beat them in mm -hmm. Laramie my freshman year. Um, but I know how hard it was uh, before I even joined the Mountain West when I had to go play in Laramie as a freshman at Oregon State. It, and uh, for Coleman, may not have had a chance to beat Wyoming, but for whatever reason, offensively, he's just dialed when he plays the Cowboys. Uh, had a career-high 22 points last year. He had 23 points earlier this year in that losing effort in Laramie. Coleman pouring in another 20 uh, in the game last night, including four threes. W what's the deal with, with Trey and Wyoming? Well, I think Trey mentioned it a little bit post-game, uh, you know, they, they do guard him. I don't know why he said they don't guard him. But um, I just think that their focus has really kind of shifted towards me and Keenan uh, early in the game when mm -hmm. they were in a triangle and two. I believe they might have went in a box and one for a little bit as well. Um, so, you know, for the non-basketball fan who may not know as much, it's when somebody's face guarding you and it doesn't matter what else is going on on the court. They're just face guarding two guys in a triangle two, face guard one guy in a box and one. So it allowed Trey to get plenty of opportunities. But, I mean, Trey showed his whole arsenal last night, getting to the basket, um, shooting the three ball, uh, getting to his mid-range, curling off some mid-range jumpers. And then I think, uh, you know, Keaton did a good job setting a lot of us up for some easy looks. And then Nick did a great job as well, especially with the way he's been playing. Talk about the way that Trey has really kind of taken his offensive game to another level this year, and especially in terms of his three-point shooting. You look at the last, like, two months, and he has been really, really solid from beyond the arc. What has that change been like, you know, to see for Trey and going out there? It seems like he is shooting with a ton of confidence right now. Well, I think it's work ethic, honestly. And Trey has a tremendous work ethic uh, when it comes to getting in the gym. And that goes for a lot of the guys on our team. Uh, but for Trey, I think his big thing was kind of sticking some shots. A lot of times he felt like he was kind of um, getting a shot up, fading away, and not kind of sticking like he should. And Coach Alford, one of the best shooters uh, to learn from uh, as a coach, um, I think he kind of emphasized the tray, you got to stick your landing. And a lot of times mm -hmm. uh, in the last month or so, you've seen a much better job for him shooting the three. But it's a great for our team yeah. um, because for him to be able to shoot the three well, it opens up the floor, uh, especially for somebody like me uh, who really shoots the ball, and that's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm known for. Um, it spaces the floor for me, so I'm really happy for him. And then Nick shot the ball well from three recently as of late, so that's been great too. All right, before we move on to the next segment, I do want to go back uh, to this past weekend as well. You guys went down to Las Vegas and beat UNLV 
Always a difficult game. It's a big rivalry. Uh, the energy down at Thomas Mack was, was juiced and, and getting road wins. Super difficult in the Mountain West. They led this game basically the entire way, and then you guys kind of snatched it at the end. Uh, what do you think that game kind of showed about the resolve of this team to kind of hang into a game, hang around in a game, and then take it when the moment you know really presents itself? Well, I think that we still had a bit, bitter feeling from our game against New Mexico. We knew that we let one slip from our hands in a home game, and we knew we had a big opportunity playing against a UNLV team. That was one game out of first place at the moment. I think now with some of the way the teams have uh, lost games, I think they're still one game out, just like us. But uh, we knew that we had a game and an opportunity to go in there and knock off a team who's playing for first against us. Um, so we did a great job, and then also it's a rivalry game. Uh, we knew that we kind of owe these guys. They've beaten us the last two years. We haven't been able to beat them. So we knew that we wanted to get in there and handle business and win the road game is never easy. So to do it the way we did was awesome. So in about after a couple of wins, uh, eight and five now in the Mountain West Conference, uh, gearing up for a game Friday night uh, now against San Jose State. We'll talk about that. Plus 2,000 points for Jared Lucas. We'll talk about what that means to him and uh, also hear from Coach Alford and Trey Coleman about the impressive feat coming up next. It's really impressive, you know, just uh, Jared being the guy he is, you know, a team guy. Uh, he can he can shoot shoot the heck out of the ball, obviously. And uh, just being able to be on that journey with him and seeing him reach 2,000 points with all the work he puts in, it's just, it's just real, good to, real good to see. Just telling you as a former player, that's hard to do. <laughs> it's, it's hard to stay healthy that long. It's hard to uh, put the ball in the basket that many times in a career. Um, it takes a lot of work, and Jared has – uh, spent a lot of time on his on his uh, skill of shooting the basketball. He he's in here at eight nine o'clock every morning uh, on practice days, game days. He's in here eight and nine o'clock in the morning, uh, working on his game, working on his shooting. He's a ninety percent foul shooter. Um, he's just doing uh, things that he's doing right now, and what he's achieving is because of the hard work he's put into it. Um, it it's not thing you don't score two thousand points without uh, putting in the work ahead of time. And I've seen it firsthand. He works extremely hard, so very, very happy for him. Welcome back to the Jared Lucas Show. And 2,000 points against Wyoming uh, for Jared and, and a great accomplishment, five seasons of college basketball, as you mentioned uh, before. Has it hit you even more now this morning that you've had a chance to kind of sleep on it? I know you mentioned before, I, I imagine you kind of start thinking about different players and teammates and coaches and, and you know, the people have been part of your basketball journey, you know, to get to something like that. It's probably hard not to be nostalgic. Yeah, you know, last night I was able to think about it, but this morning I was able to think about it a little more. Uh, as my parents both sent me a really nice text to kind of congratulate me. And uh, Atobe, our, my Compton Magic guy, who I've uh, who's been in my corner ever since my eighth grade year of high school, um, talked to me. And it, yeah, it, it, it was real emotional, too, you know, because my parents sent the text that they did and, and all the hard work that I put in. But... You know, I also got to thank my parents, too, all the hours that they put into, uh, you know, getting me to the gym, um, a lot of times pushing me um, and doing plenty of little things. But it also goes to show my teammates and uh, plenty of point guards who I've shared the court with uh, throughout my career, uh, especially guys like Ethan Thompson. Um, I think that's been one of the biggest, biggest guys in my career who I've learned so much from. Uh, right now he's playing in the G League, and his dad was an assistant coach at Oregon State. Um, still is an assistant coach at Oregon State, but Ethan did so much for me in my career, uh, being able to develop to the player I am. Uh, I learned so much from him um, as a leader, and uh, you know when I go back to look on my college career, a lot of that's going to go towards Ethan and everything mm -hmm. that he's done in his career. Uh, and Keenan's done a great job setting me up as well. You think about, I'm sure, like you imagine, you, you were obviously closing it on 2,000 points. I'm sure you imagine maybe it's like a big three-point shot. It's you know, it's maybe it's a game-winning shot. It was done at the free throw line, which is a little anticlimactic, but also very appropriate because that is a part of your craft that you have really yeah. put so much time into. I think you're kind of laughing about yeah. it. I mean, what did you make of that situation? Well, a couple of the guys who I had told before the game, uh, I didn't want to tell the whole team. I just told a couple of the guys, hey, you know, I, I know that I'm close tonight. And the coaching staff knew that I was pretty close. Uh, they knew I was 17 points away. Um, so a couple of guys knew, and they said, watch, you're going to get it on a free throw. <laughs> and they said, no one knew it's going to be a free throw. And so I got fouled, and I knew because I was forcing the cause a little <laughs> bit towards the end. I knew we were up, we were up big, and, uh, you know, the coaches were calling a couple extra sets for me to get it done. And, you know, I got fouled, and you see Nick right there patting me on the butt. 
Um, and he said, I, I remember him telling me, I told you it was going to be a free throw. Uh, and he was one of those guys that told me before the game. So it was funny. Uh, and I think it is kind of appropriate, you know, with how well I get to the free throw line. All right. Uh, let's get it to the game on Friday night. It's going to be Nevada, San Jose State. Uh, you guys had a, a nice, solid win here at home against the Spartans. I know that this is not one of the best teams in the Mountain West. They've really had a struggle this year. And going to San Jose is not necessarily the easiest environment because it's, frankly, it's empty. You know, I, I imagine that as a player, you do have to kind of turn up a little bit more of your internal motivation because you don't have that big crowd at home or even that raucous crowd on the road. Yeah, but San Jose is still a good team. And, you know, last year in the, in the uh, tournament, they got us. Um, so this isn't a team we're going to overlook. Uh, and we know Alvaro Cardenas, their starting point guard, I believe it was two games ago he was sick. He missed a game against Wyoming that I think they're more than capable of winning. Uh, so this is a team that is capable of beating uh, the upper half of the conference. Uh, so we know we got to get in there and play our game. And like you mentioned, it's a different environment to play in uh, compared to most of the other Mountain West schools. But I know uh, me and the guys will be ready to go, and hopefully we can get another one on the road. All right, Wolfpack in San Jose State Friday night. So we'll have the coverage, of course, for you here on Nevada Sports Net as well as over on News 4. All right, we got a special guest for the rest of the show, Tyler Rollison, uh, another L.A. native and alum of the Compton Magic AAU program uh, that you've mentioned. So we're going to sit down with him, and we've got a game, uh, of course, at the end of the show. So we'll get to that on the other side of the break. All right, the Jared Lucas Show rolls on. This segment is sponsored by Bradley Drendel and Janae. Tyler Rollison joining the program, another yes, Southern California guy. Uh, all right, so I, I tease the fact that Tyler played for the same AAU program as you, the Compton Magic. When did you first hear about Tyler? Well, I got a phone call from, well, at first I'd probably see some stuff on social media about Tyler, and then growing up, he actually played for, I, I believe it's his uncle, um, Gary, Gary Edwards, and he coached. He coached me when I was eight or nine years oh, old. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, Your playing. uncle. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. His uncle with IEVP. And then from there, I kind of had an idea who he was. And then Compton Magic, Ato would give me a call. Hey, we're having uh, TR, Tyler Rollis, going to take a visit, take care of him. Um, so that was kind of the first time I heard about him. How yeah. crazy is it for you? Like, it, did you know Jared maybe growing up or of him uh, as somebody that was playing in that space? Or then, went, you know, maybe he was in Oregon State. Like, what was your kind of, like, early memory of maybe knowing Jared and then coming full circle and playing with him now? Uh, I think it was just, I knew of him, because in high school he was one of the um, leader scorers in SoCal, so just growing up, I knew of him in Los Altos and where he's from, my uncle's from, so when I used to go out there, we used to go to his high school and work out, so I just think like, I always knew of Jared, but then when I actually played with Compton Magic and I had committed here, Tope had told me about him, for real, so he was just like, that's a good dude, he gonna take care of you. So I just had embraced the moment, just embraced everything, and everything just took place in his own hands. How much did that make a difference for you when you did come up and, and take a visit and we were kind of considering where you wanted to go to school, that there was maybe a little bit of comfortability of somebody that you knew that, you know, from your kind of community, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing? Uh, I think that was one of the main keys because, of course, we got him. We have two other players, um, Tyler and Snooky. We all um, grew up playing against each other then. One of the coaches, Jayhawk, he had, he's from L.A., he That's had right. a bunch of So I just think that was, like, one of the biggest things I think I was looking for is just people that we could relate, like, just being from L.A. So I just think that was one of the main keys I was looking at when I was committing to a school. Being a guard as a freshman, especially handling the ball, Jared, is a really difficult thing to do as a freshman, right, to be yeah. able to take care of the yep. ball and contribute. I think what Tyler, Tyler's been able to do has been super impressive to me from the very beginning is like the way that he takes care of the ball and the way that he's been able to contribute for the team. I mean, what has been your assessment of just the way that he has been able to impact the team as a true freshman? Well, I know as a freshman, it's never easy because you can go one game playing 20 minutes and the next game you can play two. Um, so it's never easy to understand when your role is going to be called. And I think for TR, and just like it shows up on the screen, TR shooting 40% from three as a freshman. And that transition from high school to college, I don't think a lot of people realize three point line is about a foot and a half, two feet mm. further. Um, so it's an adjustment. TR's doing a tremendous job, um, especially playing with a team full of veterans, um, to be able to go in there, run the point, uh, get the respect from all the veterans on the team, just goes to show who he is as a person, but also as a player. To me, it seems like you really value the defensive side of the ball. And I know Coach Alford, mm -hmm. you, you're not going to get much playing time for him unless you're committed to playing defense. But it seems like every game you're making an impact 
defensively. Is that something that you know you pay attention to and, and want to make an impact in? Uh, yeah, because um, when I was younger, defense was the first thing I always played before scoring. So I just took pride in playing defense. And, and before every game, Coach KB would come up to me and be like, are you going to guard today? Have a little joke with me. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, like um, coming to the game as a freshman, I think defense one of the main keys where I could just keep the energy going, just keep momentum of the game going. How pleased have you been just with the way your freshman season has gone and, and the way you've been able to contribute with the team? How would you kind of assess your your play? Uh, I like it. Um, of course, I have to change a little things coming from high school, playing the whole game, scoring 30 or more. Um, but being on a team full of vets, I just think um, I'm just learning. It's all just a learning experience for me. And just taking key things from everybody to just keep going. I imagine, yeah, being able to be in a room with Jared, Keenan, even Hunter, who's had a ton of experience, you know, what have you been able to kind of take, you know, from the veterans on the team? Um, I think the main thing is just doubt it. Um, focus, just focus, keep working, um, and don't slack. Because I know, like, a lot of times, like, I could be messing up and that could affect the team. Mm -hmm. So I just think, like, just maturing more. So, yeah. How cool is it for you, Jared, to see somebody, you know, from L.A., you know, same – AAU team to then come not only be a part of your team at Nevada, but as you're kind of wrapping up your college career, there is a bit of like this t pass of the baton, yeah, you know, to, yeah. the, to the next I, level, I th right? I think that, that that's a great way to show, um, you know, both me and TR, both being from LA, playing for Compton Magic. Um, and I think TR has a great work ethic. And I always mention work ethic because that's something that I take a lot of pride in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think TR does a tremendous job putting a lot of work in. And then he's, he comes from a really good family who does a good job of uh, really supporting him. I was just mess, messing with him the other day. We playing at UNLV. Obviously, both him and I are from SoCal. Um, so it's a pretty easy drive for all of our people to get mm -hmm. out there. And I think TR took all of our tickets. Hmm. You know, we had 30, 35 people there probably. I think I, <laughs> I probably had a decent amount of people there as well. Uh, but it just goes to show the support he has with his family, uh, but also with our team. And he does a tremendous job. And I know for me, uh, being able to pass torch to the guy like that mm -hmm. uh, is going to be pretty cool. Um, but he's going to do a great job leading our program, um, not only next year, but hopefully the year is going on. Yeah, I guess what do you see as the next step for TR as, as you're, you know, you and Keenan and, and Honor, I mean, you guys are all gone, Yeah. right? Yeah. And, and this is kind of the next wave for the Wolfpack in terms of taking over the team. Well, there's a big void to be filled, and I think uh, TR knows that. He knew that coming in, committing to Nevada. Uh, he was going to have a learning experience his freshman year, as a lot of freshmen do. And then going into year two, there's going to be an opportunity to take a big step. And I think a great comparison um, from freshman to sophomore year, I think it would be Donovan Dent. Mm. Um, obviously, they're two different players, but when you want, look at the comparison from the jump Donovan Dent made from his freshman year to his sophomore year, uh, Donovan Dent might have been similar to TR, I don't know, three or four points a game. Mm -hmm. um, still got a lot of minutes as a freshman, and then this year I think Donovan Dent's averaging uh, 14, 15 points a game. So I think that'll be a great step, uh, or, or at least a great goal for TR to set for himself this next year, taking that next step. Is that part of your mindset? You know, this year, obviously, you get to learn, you get to get the experience when you've got, but next year is really the opportunity to show mm -hmm. that you can be even that kind of star player on the team. Yeah, um, I just think this offseason, I'm gonna just work on my body, um, probably work on my shooting a little more, extending my range, and just keep working, staying in the gym. All right, so we got more to get to know. Uh, TR in a second, we're gonna play two truths and a lie. Uh, we did this, I think we did this with Keenan. Yes. Yep. We're going to do yep. this with TR. We're going to have that as we wrap up our show right after this. All right, final segment here of the Jared Lucas Show brought to you by Wolfpack Moving. I'm sure you've seen the commercial. Great job by Jared. Uh, his <laughs> acting skills. Uh, and that's, uh, all right, we're going to play two truths and a lie. Uh, we're going to start with one of... Uh, Tyler's uh, breakdown. So okay. this is for you, Jared. Right. Um, scored over a thousand points in high school. Basketball was first sports. Won Nike Reach. E Y B O P C M. Won okay. the the E Y B O P C M. E Y B O P C M. That's that's <laughs> one, one of the that's one of the hardest things to do. Is it? Yes. Um, so what's the what's the lie of those three? Scored a thousand points. Basketball the first sport or won the Nike. Jim. Well, I know he scored a thousand points in high school because the kid averaged like thirty in senior year. <laughs> so I know he scored a thousand. Um, so basketball must not have been his first sport. Correct. What was your first sport? Football. What'd you play? Uh, I had played quarterback, receiver. Okay. Back. When did you get into basketball? Uh, when I.
when I was like eight, seven, okay. like when I really started playing on the AAU team. Interesting. Yeah. So you were playing football real young, mm-hmm. like playing flag, flag football at like five years old? Mm-hmm. Crenshaw? Six. No. No, not yeah. Crenshaw. We were talking actually, so we're originally from Crenshaw. Yes, yeah, that's where Crenshaw uh, district. That's where Dayon Henley, former Wolfpack uh, great, is from. We were talking about how his dad uh, is still very involved in the community, and you do know Dayon's, mm-hmm. Dayon's dad. All right, let's get to uh, one of Jared's set of questions. This is going to be for UTR. Better shooter than Steve, Steve Alford, <laughs> played high school ball at Los Alamitos. Mom's name is Tina. What's, what, what is the... What is false about those three things? Better shooter than Steve. Played high school ball at Los Alamitos. Mom's name is Tina. I'll probably say better shooter than Steve. Come on, bro. That's true. He's dogging you. That's true. That is a subjective one, though. I know. He's not going to get himself in trouble with Coach Alford. He's got to be here for a few more years. You no, know we're going to show this clip to so, Coach. So um, Jared put it that that was true, that he's a better shooter than Steve. <laughs> But it is false that he played at Los Alamitos. All right, going back. See, what was, what was high school? Los, Los, Los Altos. Altos. Los Altos. Los Alamitos. That was good. That was a good That's kind a of good trick. One. But the better the shooter than Steve, I think he, might have, gonna I think he might have a bone to pick with you about that, too. All right, let's go back to one for TR. Uh, true, one of LA's best hoopers uh, didn't get a ring in high school or likes old school music. What's false out of those things? Whoa. Likes old school music. One of LA's best hoopers <laughs> did not get a ring in high school. I really like how he set this one up. You know, there, because, there's some there's some mind games, in right? This year. Because I didn't win one in high school. Ah. So uh, yeah, I know he he won he got a ring in high school. So yeah, <laughs> that's the false. Yeah, he that's didn't get false. a ring. Yeah, he won he won a championship in high school. school. All right, uh, we're gonna have to blow through this really fast. Went to Oregon State. Dad's name is Jeff. Favorite NBA team Trailblazers. What's false in that? Favorite team, Trailblazers. What's your favorite team? Uh, I'm from L.A. I guess the Lakers or Clippers. I don't really have one. That was now. too easy, right? Yeah. Well, I thought he might have gone with it because I went to Oregon State for three years. Maybe. So I thought maybe could have gotten get fooled into Trailblazers. Yeah. yeah. TR, man, thanks for joining us. Jared, good to see you. Yeah, thank you. All right, thanks we'll see you guys me. in a couple weeks here on the Jared Lucas Show. See you next time.